All right, my friends, welcome to another episode of Christian mm -hmm. Podcast Latino. Yeah. Come on, cheer up, cheer up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, we have many friends today, mm -hmm. all wearing black. Men yeah. today wear black. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay, so we have, let's introduce everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Mr. David Barrera, hello. our friend. Hello, hello. Right here across from me. We have Mr. Norman Jackson right here sitting yep. on the yep. gray couch yeah. next to Millie. We have Millie Gudiño, my wife, right there in the middle. We have another David, so we'll see how we go about yeah. two Davids on the show. Mr. David Israel, welcome to the show. Mm -hmm. And I'm Beto Gudiño. Thank you, thank you. And today I want to talk about this, okay? Uh -huh. We have Christian musicians in the show. And I want to talk about the reality of Christian musicians. So one of the realities that I want to kind of talk about is David, David Barrera and I started a podcast a while back called the 1564 Podcast, all his idea, where he wanted to interview musicians and people in ministry, uh, worship leaders and stuff like that. And I think today it's, it's kind of like a little bit of a continuation of that idea. Okay, mm -hmm. so he might, you know, at some point I, I might just just pass the ball to David and say, David, just uh, take take the lead on the conversation because he's so right. phenomenal at that. Right. But one of the things I want to like just put on the table before we get anywhere is that you guys have played with everybody out there, but you kind of like never met, n never really met each other, you know, David yeah. and Norman. Yeah. So I want to just kick it off right there. You know, can you tell us, especially, you know, you two, and then we'll go to David Israel, just introduce real quick okay. who you are, a little bit of what you do. So let's start with David Barrera. Uh, a little bit of who I am and what I do. Yes, sir. Well, I lead worship here at Palm Harvest Church. Nice. I'm also a freelance musician doing the whole circuit here in Southern California, as you're yeah, Norman, as you're yep. very familiar <laughs> with. Yeah. And uh, I was telling you guys before we started, I was telling Norman that I met him a long time ago at the infamous or famous Steve's Barbecue. Steve's Barbecue, right? Yeah. Where a bunch of uh, top 40 bands would go play back go in the play, day. Yes. And... Um, that place is in Whittier. It's in Whittier, yeah. It's in Whittier. It's a restaurant or what? Is it still it's, there? It's still there, yeah. Okay. It's, a, it's a barbecue spot. It's a barbecue but, um, spot. They don't have live music no more. Oh, After okay. COVID, they, they stopped okay. or something. Oh, they had it for like some time and right. then they stopped, something like that. Yeah. And it wasn't a very big place from whatever. It wasn't a big place. It was a tight spot for the band. Where... Very tight, but very, very intimate. Yes. It's a very intimate spot. Right. But you know, I kind of like playing at that spot. Like, right. you know, it's, it's just the music, the vibe, and just, you know, right. just, uh, just hanging out with people and stuff like that. It's right. different, right? You right. know, but it was, um, you know, it's funny because, you know, one day I'm at Staples Center playing. Right. Then the next day I'm at Steve Barbecue. Right. A little small room. Right. That, you know, I mean, we're, we're like, I mean, it's probably like almost the stage is probably the size of this where we at right now. Right. You know, yeah. maybe a little smaller, yeah. you know, but, but I guess, you know, music's very, um, I, to me, I, I tell people it's very spiritual. Mm. Music, you know, we, it's like the Holy Spirit. You know, we don't see it, but we hear it and we feel it. Yep. The same thing with music. Like we don't, we don't, um, we don't see music in the air, but we hear it and we feel it. Mm -hmm. You know, so to to me, when we're like together tight like that, right. it brings us even closer. Yeah. You know, then when we're like on a stage, you know, and playing in front of thousands and thousands of people, right. you know, it's a uh, it's a different it's a different feeling. You know, it, I mean, it, it could be there's a lot of excitement to that, but I feel more. Uh, it, I feel the music even more when it's more intimate, right? You know, in an intimate setting. That's yeah, cool. I don't know if I, I, I don't know if you were still answering your question. Oh, no, 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 yeah, no, 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 something. No, else. that's great. No, that's great. <laughs> but but you know, but it's funny right. how yeah. how. So we've met a long time ago. Right. You know, I got Alzheimer's. I don't remember everything. Right, you know? right, right. It doesn't joke, okay? Right, right. <laughs> but old timers. But um, but you know. This will, this, I, I could truly say this is where we're, we're actually meeting today. You right, know? right. And it's funny how you know a lot of the people that I know. Right. Everyone Vice that I work with, you work with, and right. you know. Right. You know, but we've never met. Right. What a, you know, it's a really small circuit, you know, which I mean, yeah. is pretty cool. I like it, you know. Yeah. And uh, nice to meet you. Yeah, you know? same. Yeah, like, yeah. Nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah. And there's a few other guys, too, that I haven't met that, like, I've heard all about. Or yeah. I follow the classic. We follow each other on Instagram. Yeah. yeah. And we like our stuff, but I've never met them. Like, you know what's actually... crazy about me? Because I don't have Instagram or none of that. Okay. So, okay. what it is. Oh. <laughs> 
I, like they say IG, I'm like, what's well, GI? You yeah. know, just keep messing around, you yeah. know. <laughs> but yeah, I don't have none of that stuff. But I mean, I I have a lot of work, you know. But, right. But we we know all the same people. Right. You know, so I'm in the industry doing this, doing that. Um, same. Yeah. yeah. So that's cool, man. Yeah. No, that's dope. That's yeah, awesome. yeah. And it's awesome. No, do you? I mean, yeah. It sounds like you're in the same industry. Does it matter what instrument you play? Is that a thing? You know, I'm a bass player, or are you? Um, it, it, well, to be in the music industry, it doesn't really matter. But but like a rhythm section, yeah. like drum, bass, guitar, um, keys. I can't leave myself out. Yeah. Um, the core. We tend to yeah, like the core. We tend to get more work. Right. It's more um, on demand. You know, this might sound kind of bad, but I feel like 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 rhythm sections. We're like the 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 sharks of the sea. Right. You know, and right. then you got the string players and the right. trumpet players. They're more like the shrimp of the sea, you know. Yeah. There's a bunch of them. Yeah. But you only get a few, like, like in rhythm. I mean, it's... So LA, you're, you're harder to find. <laughs> it's a harder to hire, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. You know, because um, it is hard finding people that know the the style or the genre. Right. Um, you know, so, and, and the ones that do know it, they're always working, you know. Right. So, like, if you call me for something, right? You call me a month before, the chances of me doing it is probably gonna be zero. You know, I probably won't be able to do it. Right. If you call me the day before, or if you call me the day before and I'm off that the next the day, um, I'm probably not gonna do it because I take days off to hang out with the family, you know, and spend right. time with the family and all that. I gotta take days off. Right. Yeah. If I wanted to, I could probably work every day of the week, but I don't because right. you know it's just I don't want to be away from the family. Right. Wow. Yeah. No, and that's why you're here today because I've been trying <laughs> to connect you guys <laughs> yeah. for a long time. Like okay. I remember for the longest time because uh, I told David Israel over here. I want to know his story, you know. Yeah. And we were doing this podcast, and right. I said, I told David, "Hey, we should bring him and just have yeah. him connect, right?" Yeah. But I know how busy you are, you know. It, so it just it, it, it kind of hadn't you know? happened. Yeah. But today's happening, so Good I'm excited happened, for that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. hey, yeah. I got tricked into this, but yeah, like, yeah. like so it. a big part of that is thanks to David Israel. <laughs> and so David Israel, would you just introduce <laughs> yeah. yourself real quick? Because um, you you kind of made it. Yeah. He's the man of the part hour. Of this. <laughs> well, my name is David Israel. I've been knowing Norman since 2001. Uh, yeah, 2002. 2001. Yeah. Uh, oh, like 2002. Yeah, yeah, 2002. June 7th. Yeah, June 7th. <laughs> I don't know how I remember that. <laughs> yeah. That's nice. Um, yeah, we've been friends for a long, long time. Um, we mainly hang out and just make music whenever we hang out. That's cool. It's just hard because we're both busy, you know, so... It's like, man, he's one of those friends that no matter how much time passes in between, we know exactly where we're at. Yeah. You know, we're not needy or anything like that. But um, I kind of had a trick him to come over here. Come over here. <laughs> Make sure you shower. <laughs> Good thing I shower. Did. That's <laughs> how we really made it. No happen. ripped jeans. <laughs> no ripped jeans. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> there we go. Look at that. Look, look at that. But <laughs> Millie, Millie's wearing your style too. So yeah, oh yeah. there you it's, go. I know. It's safe today. It's yeah. Great. <laughs> That's great. Uh, well, thank you, David, for you know bringing Norman Jackson today. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you said music is spiritual. Yes. And it's kind of like the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Right? But also music, I think out there, you know, you guys have experience playing with, let, let's say, non-Christian artists. Yeah. And for example, um, I just saw a post on Facebook by a guy I follow. I think he's from um, El Camino Church, or at least that's where I met him. Mm-hmm. And he was hanging out with a guy named Abraham Laboriel, Laboriel yeah. which is Legend. one of the <laughs> number yeah, yeah. Legend. legendary, legendary bass player. player. Yeah. Yeah. Legend. So he's hanging out with him in Mexico City because they went to see a show, Paul McCartney, right? And okay. then I guess, uh, uh, David, you told me that uh, Abraham Laboriel's son is, is, drummer. is, is the drummer, drummer yeah. for, for Paul, Paul McCartney, McCartney, right? Yeah. So they get the connection. So he's like, you know, he's taking a selfie with Sir Paul McCartney. <laughs> And yeah. with Abraham Laboriel, yeah. he's like, how lucky am I that today, you know, I'm meeting the Beatle, right? right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, he gets I to do yeah. that in yeah. their lifetime. Yeah. So anyways, all that to say, you know, like you guys as musicians, and these guys are, the reason I'm saying is because they're Christian guys. Yeah, yeah. Right? And you guys experiment that a lot. You know, you you play with a lot of, like, let's just say, like non-Christians. Yeah. How do you, is there a difference You know, when it comes to playing with... There is a very big difference, you know. Uh, What is it? Uh, to me, like, I mean, playing in churches is, is not a gig. 
you know, right. I don't right. see it as a gig, even though I work for the church right. and um, I'm a music director at Victory Outreach Chino. Oh, right. wow. Um, so, you know, we, um, it's, it's definitely, um, it's more spiritual, definitely, because now you're, you know, we're dealing with people's lives, you know, people yeah. that are broken, that come into the church that, you know, so I don't see it as a gig. I see it more like a privilege and, and kind of like being able to do this right. when I'm in church. And even even outside of church, you know, like like we try to kind of keep the same testimony and and be um be the light, you know, mm -hmm. be the light in the world. Also, how we're in church, try to do it in in the world, like you know, playing out there with whoever, you know. Um, so it's definitely a difference to me when when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. Um, now the thing about secular that you know, not everyone's gonna think like you think, you know. No one's gonna think like like no one's you know. Not everyone's a believer. You know, mm -hmm. but believe it or not, a lot of the people that I play with, they believe in God, you know, but it's the difference between believe, believing in God and like, like walking with God, you know, and, and walking in his, in his, um, in his path, right. you know, it's, it's a difference. Uh, but they, uh, you know, but they try, I guess, you know, um, I'm not saying that they're bad people because there's a lot of good people, but you know, like the Bible says, you know, only, um, you know, Jesus la camino, la vida y la vida, you know, right. only through Jesus we could go to heaven. Right or through yeah through Jesus right, yes. so it, to me it's the same thing like like with them like you can know you know about God and you can say oh yeah God's in my life but I feel like it's not um but it's not enough you know like like unless you really walk that path you know and really believe in right. deep inside and and have that relationship right. you know that's where it it um it all changes yeah so yeah that you know so I don't know if I answered the question but you know you did what do you think David <laughs> Mr David I, I agree and and it drives me. And I'm sorry I'm going to say this, but it drives me crazy when I see I Christian musicians go like, oh, I'm going to my gig and they're mm -hmm. going to a church to play. And yeah. it's because I share that same yeah. sentiment. I'm like, it's not a gig, dude. Like, yeah. it's it's not because it's very different. Like, and I think I've told you and, and Mike who's here, it's like, I it, my mentality is different. You know, uh, when I'm playing out or when I'm playing at church, when we're playing at church, just like Norman said, we're, yeah. we're dealing with people's lives. We are, yeah. at that point, we are vessels. Yeah. You know, God has exactly. to move through yeah. us. You know what I mean? I'm just there to be a vessel. I'm not there to entertain. Obviously, the excellence is still the same. That's the one thing I will carry in both. It's like, okay, I want to play excellent, you know, in both scenarios. But yeah. obviously, I know that this one, it's like, okay, not only preparing and being excellent for the Lord, but leading a life that's, you know, worship unto the Lord. Because, again, we are vessels. It's like yeah. we're just there to be used. We're not there to be looked at. I mean, people do look at us because we're in the front, but it's not about yeah. us. So I think th that's one of the things when I see a, a young musician go like, oh, I'm going to my gig, you know, because uh, <laughs> yeah. especially when they play. Now it's really famous to play like at big churches. Yeah. That's like a big thing now, as you right. know, you know, to get yeah. hired by name, whatever mega church here in Southern California. And obviously you're you're more than likely getting hired to play there. Um, mm. And they're like, I'm going to my gig. And so I'm like, no, man, it's not a gig. It's it's co something completely different. And you got to prep yourself in a different way. Yeah. You know, your heart has to be different, you know. Um, so yeah, totally agree with yeah. you, man. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Mille, <laughs> I'm I'm there, you know. Because Mille is the worshiper, right? Mille, right. Mille is the one that comes and worships. Yes, yes, right. and it, for me, it's super important time, you know, before the sermon, mm -hmm. because that's how I prepare myself, and I'm like God through through music, through melody, speaks to me. Yeah, yeah. And I, yeah, I, and I'm there asking him, what do you have for me today? You know, like most of us, like why every Sunday I cry? I, I just don't want to be, you know, seen. I'm right there in front because I get so distracted. Mm -hmm. Right. But everybody can see me too, right? Are you okay? Like, oh, I'm okay. It's happy here. <laughs> yeah, 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 right, yeah. But, yeah. Very powerful, you know. Oh, yeah. Music's very, it's all over us. Everything, I can go like this, and that has a note, you know. Right. That's music. That's right. It's, mm -hmm. it's yeah. everywhere, you know. Yeah. Like, we cannot escape it, mm -hmm. you know. We cannot. We go outside and just hearing the ambient, that's music. Right. Mm -hmm. That's a sound. That's a note. Yeah. If you, you know, I started getting all deep into this no, kind of no, stuff, no, like, no. you know, but, um, but, you know, just so we know, that's why to me is like, it's like the Holy Spirit. It's okay. everywhere, you know, and I like, like, we don't see it, but we feel it, we hear it, mm -hmm. you know, and it moves you. 
Did that's you guys, that. did you grow up going to a Hispanic church? Or Latino I did, church? yeah. Like, did you grow up, David, going to a Latino church? So, yeah. all of it, like I did too. So, did you grow up with like the whole jubilo, remolineando, yeah. all that stuff? I played all the tunga, tunga, yeah, tunga. Right. I played, you know, it's, but it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny because when I, when I, uh, tunga, tunga, yeah. Just, you know, tunga, 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 That is accurate though. That is accurate. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, when I, when I first I started playing music, I was playing at a Baptist church. I was 12 okay. years old playing drums in a Baptist church. Okay. Yeah, so that's where I started and then right. there's a whole story right. you know right, and right, right. so i got i got to explain a little bit of everything like from from the baptist church to the spanish church to mm -hmm. the gospel church right now everything we're doing is kind of like gospel ccm, gospel CCM. yeah right. everything's had you know i mean it, me, the music has changed a lot in right. in, in churches right you mm -hmm. know so yeah but i mean the reason i brought that up because there's a certain thing about growing up in a church like that yeah that kind of like sets you up mentally for later on playing music i don't know if that if you share yeah that. It, I I think um even when I when I was twelve years old playing in a Baptist church the music yeah. was super easy right. you know um, quartet gospel music it was it wasn't something um intricate or complex where like oh my god you got to right. be this crazy musician to play it but there's a certain feel that you that you know by playing the music that influenced me and 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 gave me a certain rhythm within right. you right. know so then when I got to a Spanish church another different feel right another you know influence. And um and then you know then, but then from there everything kind of just kind of you know I think that music it helps you um kind of like the blues the blues is very basic a twelve right. bar blues right you know but that's the beginning of um like R and B or or a lot of music yeah. and jazz even yeah. jazz and I so that's the beginning of where it starts it's so not complex nothing crazy mm -hmm. but you can make it crazy after a while but learning that the basics of blues takes you into uh into jazz and all that right you know because I play jazz too I've been able to play a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. What's one uh, is? Do you have a favorite genre? Or? You know, um, this is this is me just as a as a human and what I like musically. Mm -hmm. um, jazz, really, I love jazz. Like if I had to choose one style of music to play or genre, it would be jazz. Whether it's jazz with a gospel singer or whatever, but it would be jazz. Why do you why why do you think that is? Well, uh, because it requires a lot from me. Like mm -hmm. um, makes you it's think. A, it makes you think. Yeah. And it's very improv, in, 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 improv. There's a lot of improv involved in that. Like, like mm -hmm. you know, um, you learn all these crazy scales and chords and techniques and you know right. everything, all that. Right. But once you learn all that, then you you use that. But now is how you can interpret that too. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, I could play. I could get you know. I could take a jazz song and play it a certain way, and another guy will come in and play it his way. Mm, you know, right. we all, have, we all, you know, we, you can put a sheet of music, right? Let's say we all play the same note, he plays the same note, but we're all going to interpret that different mm -hmm. with a different feel. Right. And I think a lot of it has to do even um, in church, like playing in church, um, uh, you know, those influences. And you, you build a certain rhythm within you, you internalize a certain, like, 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 like rhythm <laughs> in you. And um, so that's why, like, I will probably play it a little bit different from that person. I'm not saying it can be better than that person or no. worse, no. but it's just different. This is different. Yeah. 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 Just like a painter, like a painter, you know, tell a painter, oh, pay me a house, you know, and they say they give them something. Okay. So this can be like a little sketch or whatever, right? They're going to paint it the same. Well, they're going to paint it, but in their own way. Right. Yeah. There's yeah, music has different genres and there's David Israel's genre. Yeah. Right. We're still trying to figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> what genre yeah. you're world you're music? In. Is it world music? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everybody asks me what style of music you play. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> nobody knows. The you know, <laughs> of everything. <laughs> and even me that I um I help them, you know, um pretty much compose and, and arrange the music. I don't even know sometimes, like, you know, but, <laughs> but, but it's somewhere around pop and who knows what else, you know, <laughs> but, but, but it's a certain influence, a certain feel too, Love you it. know, um, I, I do like recently, like, like, you know, I do mix and engineer, engineering. So I mix music, but one thing I've learned that after you learn all those technical words and, and the equipment and all that stuff, right. it's how does it sound and feel mm -hmm. yeah. at the end of the day is how does it sound and feel? Wow. You know? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, because you could try to make a, you know, right. you know, you can have the greatest song in the world, but if without the right mix, you know, people are not going to feel it, hear it, or feel mm -hmm. it. Yeah, the wow. same thing. Yeah. yeah, that's so important because, uh, like for example, I I love music with lyrics, right, with somebody singing over yeah. the song, but I think like I so agree with that because, 
like I tell my son, you know, he's he's learning the guitar and he's getting pretty good. But I tell him it's not so much about what you do on the guitar. Just make it sound good to fit. Yeah. In this case, we're playing worship. Right? Yeah. So yeah. just make it sound good so that it fits the entire you know, body of music yeah. we're doing. Right. And make it well so that you don't stand out as the wrong note too, you know? And yeah. I mean there's there's room for okay, I made I hit the wrong note here or there. Yeah. Right. But I mean, try your best, right? Practice, get yeah. really good at it. And then also kind of like blend in. It's not about really about you standing out. There might be moments for that, right? There's solo yeah. and music yeah. and things like that. But you need to be a part of the whole. Yeah. Because in this case, yeah, it's worship and it's about what we're singing about. Yeah. Right? So how are we carrying people into, in this case, the presence of God? Right. right? So. Yeah. When we came and played, did we move people to connect with God, or did we move people to to look at how cool my chord or my progression right. was? Right. right, yeah. Right, and I mean, there's uh, there's a balance, I would say, right, because you can also get creative, and there's room for like sounding great and maybe right. adding your taste and right. all of that. But that's so valuable because I feel as a I know as a, a people in worship, I see that a lot, right? Like where music. Um, helps people connect with God. And that's why I love like Millie's example because she's not musically oriented at all. Yeah. But she is because she loves music and music drives yeah. her to worship God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And I yeah, think yeah. that's a big thing we're. And when we're I aiming feel that I am not connected, that I'm missing something, or that I, I, I can hear God, I put more worship music. Yeah, mm. you know, like yeah. I need you, God. Where are you? I just feel like you're not here, but I know you're here because it's not a feeling. Nothing right. that I can do, uh, I'm gonna make you to don't love me. I know you love me, and you're here mm -hmm. all the time, right? That's why you sent us your son Jesus, so he died for us, and he gave us this beautiful gift that we're talking about, the yeah. Holy Spirit. Yeah. It's like, no matter what I do, He's always here. But what I can feel, you, why, why I feel like you're not here, right? Because this time is hard for me. I'm in pain or I don't like my situation. Where mm -hmm. are you? Right. And mm -hmm. did you know what? I just, I'm, I'm fighting with this. And sometimes I, we always say that it's the devil. No, sometimes it's us. It's us, right? yeah. It's us because we want something so bad that uh, the world is offering me and I don't have it. So it's yeah. me. The devil is not even there. The yeah. devil, you know? you know? So I just connect and I start like, oh, you know, I, I, I feel you. You're here. Thank you so much. <laughs> like, finally. But I'm looking for him and I use music. Yeah, sometimes I feel like we give the devil too much credit. Yeah, you know what's going on in our life. I'm blaming the devil. Everybody. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and it's uh, I think it's it's up to us. The devil's been defeated already. Mm. You know, I mm. mean, it's it's really um, it's it's us that we need to you know we need to be strong and 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 see like okay, I need to take care of this. I need to make sure that you know don't do this no more or you know whatever the, pro the whatever it might be or or if we're going through problems you know family problems or anything. Um, you know, it's up to us to really like, I think we, we should, I mean, we still got to pray for it and, and just tell God to give us the strength, you know, to go through it. But let's not blame the devil. Forget him. Right. He's a nobody, you know, mm -hmm. he's not good. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's up to us. Like we need to be strong and like, let's move forward with this. Lord, give us the strength to move forward. Mm -hmm. You know, That's so good. Yeah. Well, speaking of moving forward, uh, we were in a gig together with David Israel playing some songs in L.A. Uh, I think we were at the, the radio station, right? And then we went to have breakfast with you, Norman, mm -hmm. and you were sharing a little bit of your your story. Yeah. And I say move on because you came from Honduras. Latin America, yeah. Honduras, right? Yeah. Yeah. Would you share a little bit of that journey? Yeah, yeah. What was yeah. it like for you? There's a lot of things in in, in between all that, but um, uh, I try to, as much as I can remember, but you know, I was born in Honduras, mm. 1981, November 8th. My birthday was last Friday, as a matter of fact. Oh, oh happy, happy birthday! birthday. I was 23. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's, right. that's right. I was born in 1981, so I know okay. your age. <laughs> okay. right. There you go. There you go. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I was born in in Honduras, 1981, and um, I came here to the U.S. when I was um seven years old, mm. but I did not come through a plane or or anything like that. Um, we came through, we came walking, going over hills, bridges, um, you know, as an immigrant, 
I was an immigrant. I mean, we almost got killed somewhere. I don't know where, where in, I'm guessing somewhere in Mexico, they were trying to rob us, you know, guys with machetes, you know? Oh. Um, mm -hmm. It's uh, it's crazy. Like, like I remember another time we were crossing a river and um, I mean, the water's up to like here for me. And uh, the water was like, kind of like a, it looked like a latte, you know, that, that color, and, you know, cause of mud and all that right, stuff. Right. Yeah, yeah, it mixed with the, with, with the water. You know, so it was that, um, that's another adventure that I- At seven years old. At, at seven years old. Wow. You know, at, at the time- I, than Melody. At the time, I, to me, it wasn't dangerous. Mm. Because I'm a kid, right? Mm. Right. Usually, Thank kid. Her. Yeah, you're yeah. Just following. You're just. But now following. that I think about it, I'll be like, man, that's very dangerous. Yeah. Like, like that yeah. could, that, you know. Yeah. You have kids now. I have like, kids now. Yeah. You think about yeah. them, like going through that and. Yeah, I remember crossing a bridge that was made of nothing but ropes. Jeez, you know, man. it was like you know, and it wasn't far. It's was, it was probably like I don't know, maybe 20, 30 feet, right? Long. Um, but if you fall, right, man, you would go and hit these these stones, and because it's like a little river with like all these stones down there. Um, I remember crossing that. Um, I crossed that by myself, and it was me, my dad, and my sister. My dad grabbed my sister and, and took her. She was like a year younger than me, um, but I went by myself. Um, I remember eating some really spicy bean beans somewhere in there. You know, <laughs> yeah, I don't even know where. Uh, but then once we spicy crossed, beans, spicy beans, yeah, it was in Mexico. Eh? Picantes. Picantes, picantes, yeah, picantes, yeah, yeah. So beans. We, Frijoles, beans. yeah. Frijoles. Oh, frijoles, frijoles, yeah, yeah, yeah. Frijoles picantes. Yeah. <laughs> I thought beans, Let's like, no, no, no. like person or something. No, oh, no, beans. Oh, no, oh, beans. no, beans, wow, no, okay. beans. Right. Yeah, I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> some, some salt, salt. <laughs> no, um, yeah. So once we cross um to the U.S., we were on the side of the freeway for I want to say maybe two or three days waiting for someone to come pick us up. I guess someone's supposed to come pick us up, but mm -hmm. it took that long. And um, I remember when I was laying there, uh, I don't know which day it was, but everyone was just laying there because during the day, it probably had to be like 2 or 3 p.m. You know, the sun's still up. Um, we're laying there. Everyone was asleep, right? And I'm all the way to the edge. So it was about 15 people. Okay. You know, it was not just like us three. It was like okay. like about 16 of us. And um, I remember uh, something woke me up. And because when I woke up, I see this thing coming from far, about maybe 10, like from here to the screen, about 10, 15, you know, feet away. And it was a, a snake, a rattlesnake. What? Yeah. And I'm all the way to the edge. So imagine if I'm, if I wouldn't uh, woken up, like that thing would have probably bit me yeah. first or something, you know, like, or, or got me, you know, luckily um, I, I, I opened my eyes and I just, and I, I was looking at it for like a few seconds. And then, like, I realized, like, oh, it's a snake. And I jumped, culebra, culebra, you know, like, and started jumping, and got all scared. That means snake. Okay. Culebra. <laughs> yeah, culebra, yeah. Uh, did I say it right? <laughs> no. Um, so, um, so everyone gets up, starts running. Well, not running. Everyone just kind of gets up. And my dad uh, grabbed a stick and, and, killed, and, the and killed the snake. Yeah. Took the rattle. I don't know for what, you know. Yeah, he's, he's, like, oh. he's like, I know. He's like, oh, I could sell this, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, really? We're in the U.S. now, you know. Yeah, make money. So, um, so that was that adventure. Um, as far as that, and then finally we got to. Uh, we were that's in San Diego. We finally got to Long Beach, uh, where we met with my mom. Cause my mom was here before us, like mm -hmm. maybe a year before us. Um, and then after that, oh man, all hell broke loose between my dad and my mom, their marriage, you know, it was right. pretty bad. I don't talk bad about them, but right. you know, they had a really uh, rough marriage. You know, I seen a lot of things. Um, I seen him fight physically. You know, I seen my mom cheat on my dad, my dad cheat on my mom. Like, I mean, it's, it's all toxic. like, yeah, toxic. Yeah. Well, you know, and they're good people, but, but I guess they, they were just meant for each other. Yeah. You know, problems, you know? Yeah. Um, so from there, um, we, so we got to, to um, we got to Long Beach and, and it was just, you know, we were living with both of them, but then my dad moved out and so we were with my mom. Then uh, I don't know how long after that, I was still a kid. I was like nine years old at, by this time. Um, my dad came to the, he came to pick us up. My mom said, oh, grab all your clothes. They, we put them in a, in a bag. And we, me and my sister, we took our, all of our clothes and she was like, oh, you guys going to a party, you know? So we were going to a party, you know? And we went to a party and we never went back with my mom. Wow. Yeah. So I guess I, I, now that I'm a grown, um, I understand that maybe financially she couldn't really take care of us because it was us, you know, my, me and my sister. And then I had two younger sisters that she had. Right. You know, they were, they were like two and three at the time. So, yeah, it was probably too much for her. Like It was just too mm -hmm. much for her to handle. So 
I don't, you know, I'm not mad at my mom or resent her because of that or anything like that. Like, I love my mom, you know, and I love my dad too, mm. you know. Um, is We all have mistakes. We all do make mistakes, you know. We all, you know, have our own, you know. But I don't, I'm not going to judge you because of the mistake or anything. I'll judge them because of that. You know, now that I'm older, I've heard her story, her side of the story and my dad's side of the story. Mm. You know, and at the end of the day, it's like, you guys just need to get together. You, you know, <laughs> jealousy and jealousy, you know. Anyways, through all that... Th I had I haven't played an instrument yet. I'm not a musician at all, but I would always be fascinated by music and musicians' life. Like I would just like like I used to like watching drummers, you know, because every kid wants to be a drummer. Right. So I remember like anywhere we went and there was live instruments or live music. Um, I was like, man, I, one day I want to be a musician, not to make money or anything like that. It's just I'm a kid and I just want to play music because yeah. I love it. And I remember when I think turned like maybe ten or eleven, my um one of my my um aunts bought me a a drum set mm. you know they, oh they oh my dad bought it i don't know they got me a drum set and and i started playing drums so i remember my first beat was a uh, boom ka, boom boom ka, boom <laughs> ka. you know one of my dad's friends was a conguero mm. and he showed me that beat and that's where i pretty much started playing music you know and so it was my dad played he sang and he played a little bit of piano mm. um just enough to uh you know play simple chords or whatever so i didn't I would, even know that Yeah. Oh, you didn't? No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My dad's a singer. He like he was a singer, and he played guitar too. Um, don't think my dad in 1993 he got shot. They were trying to rob him. Oh wow. Um, he was at, at a mechanic shop uh, where we used to live actually too. I lived in a mechanic shop, so um, I guess uh, he was under a car working on whatever, and uh, these two guys came in, and uh, you know, so my dad saw when they came in, he got out from another car. And they were like, oh, give us your money, you know, whatever. And, and at the time, my dad said he had he had like $400 in his pocket. But in 1993, $400 right. was a lot of money. Yeah. You know, and um, he didn't want to give it to them. So he started fighting with one of them. You know, this is a story he told me. He started fighting with one of them. And the other guy got scared, nervous. And, um, and he shot him. Wow. They hit him here. The only thing my dad said, he heard the gunshot, but he didn't know he was shot. Oh, <gasps> Yeah. So much adrenaline. Yeah, yeah, from the fight. And my, my dad was a boxer too, so he knew how to fight. Oh, yeah. yeah. My dad was a boxer, so so he knew how to fight. Um, so he heard the gunshot, like he's fighting with the guy, pop, hear the gunshot, and then they run off the guys. You know, and, and so he said he started walking like like towards the office of the mechanic shop where he, he was working. He starts walking and try to open the door and uh, his hand wouldn't respond. Oh wow! He's like, like, what's going on? Like, he couldn't move his hand. Oh wow! You know, and then he said that his uh his chest started getting like the, by the heart. Well, not by the heart, but this part of the of uh, his chest started getting like, swelled up, like like getting like like his yeah uh, yeah swelling up, right? And then he said, uh, "Blood starts squirting out." Wow! Yeah, I don't want to be too graphic. I don't know if I'm too graphic, but he said, <laughs> too graphic, man. Yeah, yeah. He, he said, uh, it, "Blood starts squirt, squirting out," and I'm like, you know, like I like I mean, I was a kid. I was in fifth grade at the time. Wow. You know, but we were with my mom, actually. We were hanging out. We were not living with my mom, but we were out there, you know, just visiting my mom in Long Beach. And uh, so then he said when he saw that, he uh, he got dizzy and he fainted, wow. you know. And the other guy, there was another guy inside the, inside the shop, his co-worker, wouldn't open the door at all. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. Wow. He was so scared. He was scared, too. Yeah. He was scared. So, you know, but he didn't even want to, after they left, he didn't want to open the door. And finally, the yeah, ambulance came. They took him and all that stuff. We didn't find out he got shot to like maybe three, four days later. Because, you know, back in 1993, we didn't have cell phones, you know. So, you know, or, or was it GI or IG? Yeah, right IG, yeah. <laughs> Instagram. Yes. You know, we didn't have none of that. <laughs> right. So, um, you know, so we, yeah, we didn't find out to like way later. Right. Um, So I learned how to drive at a very young age. Like I was actually, I started driving way before that. I started driving at the age of nine, nice. but most of my dad got out the the, the hospital. Yeah. Guess who was taking him you, to his appointments? You, you, I would was it really. Yeah. I would drive him to his appointments in fifth grade. Like wow. I would take him to a uh, to a doctor appointment or therapy appointments or whatever he had. That's legal in Long Beach or what? Huh? No, <laughs> no, <laughs> that's illegal in Honduras. No, it's not. No, it's, not. <laughs> it's legal in Honduras. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, and my dad still had that mentality, I guess, you know, like, like yeah, oh, yeah. you know, so yeah. he showed me how to drive. I was driving. I've been driving since. Right. Picked up a lot of bad habits, I guess, from it, you know, but um, so I would take him to his appointment. Um, and, you know, it's funny because one time I actually got stopped by the, it was me, my dad and my sister. We were, I was fifth grade, same year. We went to the movies and um, after that, that night, my dad let me drive home after the movies. It's nighttime. 
And there was a, what would you call those? Uh, like a retain or what is it? Oh, like yeah, a, yeah, like a, a checkpoint. A checkpoint. Yeah, there was a checkpoint. Retain. Retain. Yeah. Retain. <laughs> so it was a checkpoint, and uh, and it was too late for me to bust a U. I'm driving, okay? So we get to the checkpoint. What? And then the, the cop, you know, I open my window. And a cop flashed a light on me, and he's looking at me like, like, oh, and, and my dad's next to me, right? And my sister in the back. Did you grow up a mustache or something? At this? <laughs> I know. No, they end up taking me. They threw me in the car, and not straight up. Uh, <laughs> come here. No, no, no. The, the, so the cop looks at me. He flashed the light. And he's like, "How old are you?" I'm like, I, "I think I told him I was 11 at the time." And um, and he's like, "Are you supposed to be driving?" I'm like, "No." Then and then he he pointed the light at my dad, and I looked at my dad, and I don't know how he did it, but he made his eye cry. He was crying. You know, your dad, and, and he told the cop that his his vision was hurt, and so that's why he let me drive. Oh my yeah. god! <laughs> like, I'm like, man, my dad's a good actor. You know? yeah. <laughs> and then uh, he's an artist. Your yeah, dad's an I artist. <laughs> I know. And then from there, um, the world. cop let us go. He let me drive home. Wow. He told me, okay, we'll just get home in the city, you know, and and he let us drive. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank yeah. you, Officer Ted. Yeah, you're yeah. listening for that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> thank God. Yeah, I know. Different you know, time. Yeah. So that, that was that. Um. So, but I so I started getting into music at the age of twelve. Um. Like really, like playing when I started playing at this uh, small church. Yeah. And when I say small, I mean I was playing in front of like ten people. Right. You know, it's just funny because it's my first time playing actually in front of people. I remember that day. Man, my legs were shaking like nothing. I mean, like they're like nonstop. I'm like this at the drums, like this. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like yeah, I'm like, I'm like shaking, you know. And, and the beat was just dun, 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 dun. That's, that's all I had to play, right. you know. And, and and but yeah, I was so nervous. First time playing in front of ten people. You know? <laughs> now I've, I've played in in front of like ninety thousand, a hundred thousand, and you know I don't get nervous like that, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> unless I don't know the music, you know. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the only time if I'm not prepared, but more ninety nine percent of the time I'm prepared. Mm. Yeah, that one percent is for the rest of the band that are not prepared. <laughs> 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 but um, so yeah, twelve years old. Um, you know that's where my whole journey in music starts. Uh, from there, I picked up within that same church. I picked up bass. I picked up guitar and keys. Um, keys was the last instrument I played at. I started playing at the age of 16. Um, but I also got into jazz once I got to high school. I quit playing drums and I got into jazz. And that's where uh, I, I learned, you know, uh, theory, harmony, all the, all, the, all the boring stuff. And, and from there, I just kind of kept going and, and working in, you know, um, in the industry, different churches, uh, different people. By the time I hit 22, I got my first a uh, gig i knew david by this time you know and um and i i well i was before that i was playing with a band called roca firme yeah yeah we uh we actually started this band in 1998 wow. i was i was 16 years old when we started that band mm -hmm. i was still in high school actually i was i think a junior wow. in high school um when we started that band and we did i think record our first album which i listened it back. was like a hardcore rock band yes it, we so we were yeah when we first started it wasn't that it was okay. more um it was more like disco <laughs> big who knows wow. what you know <laughs> nice yeah. like david's uh genre okay. yeah, yeah yeah but we're still developing a style right and then finally we end up being more like hardcore rock you know um but so we record our first uh first album um i don't even know how long it took to record that thing but uh, i was in high school mm, nice. um then from there we uh we signed to a label in 2002 label called Zion music records um and in Whittier, in Whittier, yeah, they were in Whittier, in, in Whittier, in okay, actually, the studio in Uptown Whittier, yeah, yeah, that was the label, that was oh, Zion okay. Music Record, oh, you know, okay. JP, yeah, 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 okay, yeah. so his yep. dad and another guy named Mike, they actually oh, okay. uh started this label, oh, okay. um, at the time, yeah, and this is like, yeah, yeah, 2002, yeah, so we signed to that label and we we finished our album, a new another album with them, but by that time, we had a, a better understanding of like the music we want to do and how we want to do it, so it was really, you know, we were the only, the first, I could say, the first Spanish rock hard rock band doing spanish music in christian in the christian world i saw them live uh, one time too yeah, yeah. did I, you see me they, was i in the you band no you weren't this, i was this in there was no the more probably when when was your last show with them uh, this was in my last show was december 3rd oh. 2003 okay so this was like oh five yeah. okay yeah no i was already oh. Was that 05? I don't know, but it was that's it was out in like Lake Elsinore in like okay. some hockey rink. Okay, yeah, that was oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, some <laughs> they're, they're playing slipping. <laughs> yeah, so like hockey rink in like the middle of nowhere in like Lake Elsinore. So, yeah, that was a long time. Yeah, so I don't, I don't, that, that, I don't was, think so, that was yeah. yeah, maybe way after me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so but yeah, so we end up um, we end up doing the the label thing and 
I think I left the band after, uh, you know, when you have a, a whole bunch of guys and young guys that they all want a part of something, you know, it happens, whatever. So anyways, I left the band. And then at the age of 22, I joined, um, I joined, I actually, I, I didn't even audition, actually. They just, I did a jazz gig with a big band. Mm. It was me, you know, playing piano with a with a big band, like full horn section. I mean, a lot of Thundercat was playing bass. Oh, really? At the wow. time, yeah. This is before he was thund uh, Thundercat. He's just Steven. <laughs> it, it was just Steven. Steven Brunner. <laughs> just Steven Brunner. I, I went to school with, with Ronald Brunner and oh, Steven wow. Brunner. We went to school together. And oh, Terrace wow. Martin. Wow. And I know Kamasi Washington. All those guys. I, I've known those guys since high school. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I did the jazz gig, and a month later, the bass player, Dale Atkins, he hit me up. He told me, "Oh, he liked the way I played." And he told me, oh, there's a there's an artist that need they're trying to put a band together for an artist. No audition, you would just show up and start rehearsals on Monday at center staging. Okay. Um, I remember I'm like, I I, I didn't know who Jessica Simpson was at the time because you know there's no social media. You know, <laughs> you, know? you never had social media. Yeah, 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 right. And I never <laughs> until had, yeah. today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I um he told me just show up, you know. Um he can talk to the music director, which Herman Jackson. Mm -hmm. Okay, he was the music director. This guy, Herman Jackson, has played for Winnie Houston. He's, right. He was playing uh, American Idol. He was one of the keyboardists yeah. for that. He's done a lot of Stevie Wonder. I mean, you name it. Mm -hmm. He's done it, you know. So he calls me. He's like, oh, I heard you're a pretty good keyboard player. And, you know, me at the time, I'm like, um, yeah, I, I think so, you know. <laughs> and um, and then cool. finally, um, he, uh, he told me, yeah, so be at Center Station at 11 a.m. And we'll start rehearsals. And that was my first time playing with the big artist. Um, That's dope. Yeah, with no audition. Well, just word of mouth, just show up. Yeah, I'm. I don't want to say I'm. I'm nobody, but you know, I, they I, give you that, music or anything to huh? rehearse. Did they give no, me, no, we show, show up. up. We we yeah, no music. We show up and they uh they will play the song and then we just kind of learn the songs on uh, there. The <laughs> rehearsal classic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, well. yeah, yeah. So that was uh so that's that. And then from there, you know, I started playing at at another church where I learned a lot of the gospel stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, so by this time, I've I've already played in a Baptist church playing the quartet gospel stuff. Yeah. I already went through uh, the Spanish churches playing the Tunga Tunga. Yeah, Tunga Tunga. You know? And then from there, and then now I'm at, I'm playing gospel, little pop music and then gospel music and, and, uh, and, and jazz, of course. Uh, jazz has been pretty much throughout my, you know, my whole life. Um, and yeah, it, so I just kind of kept going from there. I think I played with a few other artists and I've been every, I mean, I've done a lot. Like I can't even think of everything I've done. Um, I do, uh, and then when I hit about 30, I was playing with uh, J Jennifer Lopez, with J-Lo. We call her Jen. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I got to do her world tour, and we pretty much traveled the whole world for like six months with her. Was Siona already? That was Siona. Brian okay. Siona was Brian the music Siona? director. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That whole unit was a, it was a great unit, great, right. uh, great musicians. It was pretty much, the band was pretty much Free Chapel Band. Yeah, mm-hmm. With uh, Norman Jackson and, and Fausto Cuevas. Yeah. Wow. The Free Sweet. Chapel Band. Yeah, because at the time it was uh, Charles Streeter, Brian Siono, Streeter, yeah. Car uh, uh, Carnell, Harrell. Carnell, yeah. And um, that's it. The, them three, they played at Free Chapel. And then we brought, then Adam Hawley was, uh, yeah. you know, I don't know if you know Adam Hawley. Yeah. He came in too, and myself and, and uh, Fausto Cuevas, percussionist. Crazy yeah. band. Yeah. Crazy band. Yeah, yeah. Crazy so band. it was uh, it was a good time, man. I, that was my first w big tour, like, like you know, yeah. traveling the Six world. Six months. Yeah. Six months, yeah. We did come home, um, I think, twice, and for like a week and a half, two weeks. And um, But then, you know, we would go back. Once we left to Europe, we were there for like maybe three months, three and a half months. But I travel everywhere with them, you know. I was able to travel and um, it's fun. It, did you go to Russia? I did go to Russia. Yeah. Okay. The only reason I bring that up is because a couple weeks ago I was at Free Chapel and uh -huh. Sugarfoot. Okay. Sugarfoot's uh, the drummer that used yeah, to drummer. play with uh, Michael Jackson. Yep. So he did all yeah. the thriller and stuff. Legendary guy. Yep. So he's there and he's talking to Brian and then yep. Brian's telling us the story of, yep. like, oh, I met him in Russia. So I wonder if you were there. We, we were backstage. Backstage. Okay. Yeah. They they actually, they were doing some Michael Jackson type okay. show without Michael. I don't know what it was. Okay. Um, And they actually came to the show. Um, they were backstage. Uh, okay. I think I think it was before the show, or after the show. Okay. But uh, yeah, Sugarfoot was in the bag yeah. with us, hanging out. Really nice guy. Yeah. Really, yeah, really cool people. You yeah, know. Yeah. Um, yeah, but that was at Saint uh, Saint okay. Petersburg. So, okay. As a matter of fact, that was my birthday that oh, day. Oh really? Yeah. Oh shit. We were. That's awesome. It was same. Yep. Yep. That was my birthday. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yeah. November eighth. And it's funny, you know, because this is crazy. That band. Okay. So it's, yeah. it's pretty much the band and then two singers. Okay. Me. Myself, right? Me and the singer next to me, we had the same birthday. <laughs> oh, well. Now check this out. 
the singer and the key, the other keyboard player, they had the same birthday. What? What is the coincidence of that? You know, like, yeah. like it's crazy. You know, like we we have the same birthday, they had the same birthday. That's crazy. Mm, that's like I think the zodiac, zodiac signs that's must that's be zodiac real. Zodiac yeah. zodiac <laughs> zodiac <laughs> zodiac. That must be like some Illuminati. Brujería, hermano. Brujería. <laughs> <Brujería. laughs> I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so um, that's crazy. But yeah, from there I've been able to play with a few other people. Um, I mean, there's a whole bunch of names like Pani mentioned and stuff like that. David Israel. And David Israel. And, and, and also important. And also David. It's important. The most important. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Wow. Well, I have I have two questions, but I gotta go uh, to the bathroom <laughs> real quick. But one would be, who is the the person that you were most excited about playing with? Okay. And the other one, the opposite. You know, who like you play with, and you're like, okay. Um, oh, I can't say that. I don't. Know. I, 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 maybe you don't. Maybe you don't I'll, say the name. You know, I'll say if the you, one that I'm like most uh, excited to to uh, to play with. His name was uh, David Foster. Oh, yeah. They, you know, it, it, it was, uh, it, it, I can't say he hired him. He, he didn't hire me. They put a band. Okay. We were part of a band for an event, and they got, and they brought him as a special guest with his wife, wow. Catherine. And they had us, like, learn the music. So they sent us to, I guess they did hire us, you know, because they sent yeah, us all the music and stuff like that. You, he hired you. <laughs> but for me to play second keys behind David Foster, it was like, like man, like, you know. Legend. It, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, David Foster is the man, like, yeah. you know. Yeah. So you got Quincy, then you got David yeah, Foster, yeah. and then Babyface. <laughs> and ba yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Babyface. I hope they I hope they don't see this, but <laughs> <laughs> Babyface will. He's a fan. Yeah, no, yeah. Um, but yeah, David Foster was definitely um one of my uh my my all time like 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 man, I got to play with David Foster, and then I got to play with David Israel too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a coincidence! And now you're meeting David Marrera. Yeah, so yeah, 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 right? yeah. <laughs> cause of David. yeah. So David Foster. Um, and you know it's funny because. On that show, right before we were at Soundcheck, the rhythm section, we're, we're all sound checking right now. It was actually me playing sound checking keys. And then I see David Foster come in. And I'm like, oh man, here he goes, you know? Mm -hmm. And he comes up to me. He's like, I don't like when the keyboard player is better than me in my band. Oh, yeah. But what a compliment. Yeah. What, a compliment. what a compliment. Yeah, 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 yeah I know, right? Yeah, yeah I'm, like, I'm like, I was speechless. I'm like, I was yeah. like, wow, crazy. Okay, well, thank you, man. Appreciate it, you know? One of the goats. Really, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was really good, you know, and I wasn't trying to show up in front of him. I was just sound checking and oh. stuff like that. But yeah. But when, he, when you play with somebody like that, you're going to bring it. Yeah. You have to oh, bring it. You have to bring it. Yeah. You have to bring it. Well, you know, for me, like, like, like in whatever I do, you know, right. like, bring it. Yeah. like, especially when it comes to music, this yeah. is what I do. Like, yeah, this is what I do. Right. Like, there's like no, um, no, I can't do that. Or, you know, like right. if it's possible and we could think about it and think it, then yeah. we have, we could do it. You right, know? Right, right. Yeah. We have to always bring it, you yeah, know? Bring it. Yeah. yeah. But somebody like that, you're yeah. like, I'm going to bring it tonight. Oh yeah. 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 Of course. Yeah. So he, he walked in like, I don't like when the keyboard player is better than me what in my band. I prefer that just for the record. Yeah. <laughs> I prefer when the keyboard player is better it's than better. me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's cool. So that's the, the best. Yeah, and then the, the most exciting person. And you know what? I can really think. I mean, I can think of one person, but I'm not going to mention that name. But <laughs> not even that bad, you know, like someone that okay. I wouldn't want to work with. Well, actually, I don't work with that person anymore. Okay. Her, you know. <laughs> you okay. Know? Yeah. <laughs> we'll just keep it at that. <laughs> yeah. Do you have you ever <laughs> experienced? <laughs> have you ever experienced anything? Because we hear maybe rumors. Oh, you know, the music industry. There, there's evil stuff behind the scenes, or you know, the Grammys or things yeah. like that. Did you ever witness anything like you know, that? That's like, oh man. Mm. And how did you maybe even, if you did, how did you protect yourself well, from it? Well, you know, I never really like, like, like personally seen stuff backstage or anything like that. I mean, I've I've signed contracts where like, oh, don't say what whatever you see in the backstage. Don't say you cannot say nothing to no one or whatever. You know, I've signed those contracts, but I've never really seen anything like that. I've seen um, when we're doing shows, I've seen like certain subliminal messages on the screens, you know, on the LEDs, you know, when they're showing their, their, the videos and, and the concert. I've seen that kind of stuff. Uh, but me personally, like um, not really like personally where like, oh, like, oh, man, that person's, you know, worshiping the devil right now. Like, no, I've never seen that. Um, the the when we like the times that like when I did J-Lo, I mean, we prayed, you know, we prayed uh, to God, you know, she would have everyone get together and pray. Mm -hmm pray you know um to god yeah well you know but never yeah i've never really seen anything like that and thank god i like i don't want to mm -hmm. i don't want to be involved in that and 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 if i was if i did see something like that you know what i'm not gonna let that um discourage me or 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 you know make me like like or be very religious like no you know like no mm -hmm. right you know i know who i believe in and if that's who you want to believe in then that's on you you know mm -hmm. 
but um but you know you know where i come from yeah, yeah. that's good okay so all the way from honduras seven year old coming to the united states uh start your music journey uh start you know playing for amazing people travel the world what is that like now that you look back you know in um As you, I mean, we're in America, right? I'm an immigrant. I'm you know, hopefully waiting for my document yeah. sometime to come up. Um, David, your parents, you have told us, you know, David Barrera, your parents came here from Mexico and they got their citizenship through Ronald Reagan in like the okay. 80s. In the 80s, yeah. yeah. Right, in the yeah. 80s. Yeah. So it is kind of like a, it is a journey and it's not easy, right, to... Yeah attain the citizenship or all of that and yeah. now you kind of like have had the privilege of traveling and yeah. doing what you love what is that like you know and what what do you say to other people that so so just real quick i just yeah. became a citizen too back in march really I've been a permanent wow. resident for a long time i just wow. became a citizen back in march thank you yeah yeah wow. first time i got my passport and you know i was all excited to go through a custom yeah. they just uh, scan your eyes they didn't even look at my passport i'm like dude what i need this for now you know they just scan my eyes but anyways you know yeah um i was excited about that for a long time i mean been here 35 years you know and, and wow. uh, first as an immigrant then right. through a tps i think TPS, yeah. you know and then I, then became a permanent resident and right. uh, for like 10 years um and i was a citizen that's awesome um but you know being everything that i that i've experienced in my life um the traveling you know um my family my kids my girls you know everything uh to me the good and bad like like mm everything like the bad the bad situations the bad this the good times so good times and bad times all that stuff to me um i can still say i'm blessed mm. you know because we cannot enjoy the good times if we haven't had any bad times mm. mm. it makes us appreciate the good times even more when you go through struggles it makes us stronger if you think about it mm. the hard times makes us stronger you know i know it has because i've gone through depression Mm. You know, I've been through that. I, 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 I was suicidal before, you know, where I wanted to kill myself. You know, I've been through stuff even as a kid, you know, uh, so that I haven't really told no one, you know. Um, but I don't let it tear me down, you know. Like, I, you know, I, to me, it's, um, sorry, I don't want to cry, you guys. But um, is I think it's made me stronger mm. as a person, you know, and it hurts a little bit. Mm. But at the same time, I'm I'm grateful for it mm. because it makes me who I am now. Right. You know, and and I'm just I I can say I I, I can say I'm blessed. Mm. I've been blessed to travel the world, see a different culture, see everything. Um, you know, and just and not and not just that. I mean, just being able to play music, do what I love to do in church and out of church, everything like everything to me, it, it's all it's it's all a blessing. You know, and for those who uh, who play music and that want to pursue this in music. You know, there's no uh, there's no shortcuts to music, to being good. No. There's no shortcuts. You know, um, you have to practice. Yeah. It takes a lot of practice, and and you know, I get guys coming up to me like, dude, how you play like that, or how you you know, I how you do that? I'm like, it takes a lot of practice. Mm -hmm. You know, the question, the, the thing is that, are you willing to put in the work? Yeah. Do you do you want to work? How bad you want to be good? Right. How bad you want to be good? Yeah, <laughs> you know. That's, that's a question like like you got to ask yourself you know so and then after that music not just about and music not just about playing it's about listening yeah it's about research analyzing yeah you know solidifying everything you play to be good you know so when it and, and so when i if i tell guys that it's like man that's a lot you know that might be a lot to uh, be, to yeah. do <laughs> but but you have to start somewhere if you want to do it yeah You have to start somewhere. You How many hours did you used to practice piano when you first started? You know, when I first started piano, I was probably practicing six to eight hours a day in high school. Mm. I was 16 years old. I mean, I had the time, you know, um, and even all the way to about maybe 21, 22, I would practice. And I still practice every once in a while now, mm. not all the time. Um, actually, I think I practiced last week for like Ooh. 10 minutes. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. But I have a lot of experience. I already, uh, you know, I've, I've played many, um, many many gigs you know i've done thousands and thousands of gigs and even playing as church services and all that stuff i've done it all um so all that adds up to to your you know even the the good gigs the bad gigs everything it it all it all adds up to to experience yeah you know and at the end of the day like i could say that 
I was a better piano player 20 years ago than I am now. <laughs> How? Okay. <laughs> the only thing about now is that I still know what I did back then. But, you know, I kind of slowed down and I'm a little more wiser with how I play. I feel like I play way less now than what, what I did back then, mm. you know. And that's not even a bad thing. I just feel like I'm more in the pocket now right. with, uh, with a band right. than what I've been back then. Right. Um, now, to me, it's more like, like it's not about us. No. When, we're playing, when we're playing as a group, whether it's worship team or, or secular, it's not about us. Right. It's about that one sound, one yeah. band, us being mm. together connected. Yeah. And we're, you know, whether we're in, to me personally, we're, whether we're in church or, or, or out there, where um, music brings us together. Yeah. It's kind of like the body of Christ, right? That yeah. one part cannot function without the rest. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Once you realize that everything has to work at the same time and together, yes. that's when you get the, few, the full harmony. Yep, right. exactly. Yep. The word of God say, when you guys come and agree each other, God is happy. Yeah. When that happens. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And when, while you're speaking and tell us your story. And I'm trying, you know, this is with music. Mm-hmm. But I'm taking that, like, how I can apply what he's telling me, yeah. you know, to be a mom. Because I'm not a musician, but I'm, I am a mom. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And how many hours I spend with my kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What quality. How many hours I spend cooking, cleaning my house. Like... You know, this counts too. Yeah. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. To, mm-hmm. to give my hundred percent to my family and yeah. agree with my husband and with my kids. Sometimes it's not easy. Yeah. We don't. We we're not playing the we're same dissonant. sound. You know? <laughs> and, yeah. 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 yeah, it's hard, especially like now in days. Like life is very um busy. Like, so I just feel like it's, everything's always just moving, 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 yeah. moving. I feel like I'm always moving, doing this, doing that. And then my daughters, I have a 15 and a 15 and 16 year old, and they have their own schedule. Right. I feel like I'm on their schedule most of the time. You know, like, <laughs> like I'm not lying. Like I, I make one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight trips to the school every day. Well, I go well four. I go take one of my daughters, come back. Then I got to pick up the other, get the other one, take her to school, come back. Then go pick up the other one, come back home. Then pick up the other one from school. Like it's it's crazy. That's me every morning, you know. Um, but I do it because I love them, and it's uh you know it's it's for for them, you know like like right yeah. And they love music. Uh, at least one I one, remember one, seeing one, one of them, them playing. Yeah, one of them she loves music. Um, she plays bass. Yeah. Um. She got a little distracted. She had got a little uh, friend, <laughs> you know. Ah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Special friend. Well, she's not talking to him no more, you know. Okay. But um, but she's she did picking kinda, up the She kind of had that bug, that musician bug, mm-hmm. you know. Because yeah. there's a lot. Of, there's a, and another thing. A lot of musicians. We um. Well, there's there's people out there that that they they want to play music, but they don't have that bug. They don't have that mm-hmm. that within them to really like play the music, you know. Um, she did, mm. you know, or she she does. You know, I had it. You know, music's like everything to me. You know, like like it's it's like music. It's music's not just music to me. Music's what I am. This music's what I do. It's, it's a part of me. It's my life. Mm-hmm. Right. Since I was a kid, you know, it's my passion. Mm-hmm. It's a passion that I have. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and that's one thing um that she has. And there's a lot of guys um that probably still play music, but don't really have that bug to you know. That's that's why that's what makes us practice too. You know, like like because we want to be good. We want to yeah. be good at what we do. So. You know, you gotta have that that bug. You gotta have that passion in you, within you, to to do it. That's why when I get those guys that are like, oh, dude, how you do it? It's like because maybe they don't have that that passion, mm. or maybe they don't have the time. It, it's different situations. Is it's all it's different yeah. for everyone. Some people might not have the time to practice, you know, um, because of life and and mm. work and all this stuff. Um, but so you know, it's kind of hard for them. Like like once you get to that point. Um, what was the question? <laughs> the, well, that one's great. It was just about your your daughters, you know, being musicians. Oh yeah, yeah. But, so, uh-huh. but I want to ask this, you know, and this will be my last question, and then we, we can go yeah. around and see, you know, if anybody wants to say anything else. But mine would be, um, what makes a good mentor in in music, right? Like who mentored you, and if they were good, what was it? What was good about it? Yeah, my mentor, man, it was in high school when I met him. Met him in high school. It's crazy because when I first um, when I first went to, when I got out of high, junior high, my first high school actually wasn't my home school. I didn't go to my home school for high school. I went to a school in the valley called Taft High School. 
you know, I didn't want to go to my school because I grew up in a, in, a, in a rough neighborhood. Like I grew up in in South LA. You know, if you know, so for those of you who live in LA, if you know where the 105 and the 110 meet, that okay. was my neighborhood. Okay. Okay. Well, the 105 and the 110 meet. Yeah. That's pretty rough. On my side was Cribs. On the other side of the freeway was Bloods. Mm. Mm. You know, there were really any Mexican gangs in that area. It was just Bloods and Cribs. Mm. Oh, Cribs and Bloods. You know. Because we're hardworking, we don't camp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I grew up there. So I didn't want to go to my my home school, which is Lock High School, because that school uh, when I was in junior high, it was always on the news mm. with riots and all that stuff. I wanted to go to a good school, so I ended up going to um, Taft High School, and um, I only lasted maybe a, a semester, like three months at Taft, because it was just too perfect. You know, you got the little boy from the hood going into a school mm. that's like just like wow. You know, so I, I went to lock. I went back to my home school. And I was getting tired of getting up at 5 o'clock in the morning to catch a buzz all the way over there. Like, it was just too much. Crazy. Yeah, so I went to my high school, the my home school, which is lock high school. And um, they gave me my classes. And, oh, and, and I'm like, oh, I want to take a music class. So I took, I think, like theory or something. Um, so I walked into the room, to the classroom, and I sat down. And, you know, it was a full class, music class. And then the my music teacher comes in. And he saw me. And then I... After towards the end of the, the class, at the end of the, the class, he goes into his office. He called me. He's like, "Mr. Jackson, come here." He would call me Mr. Jackson. He he calls me in. He don't know who I am. He don't even know that I play piano mm. or drums or any instrument. He calls me, and he's like, um, "Would you like to do music for a living?" Wow. Wow. Yeah. He, he put the little seed in you. <laughs> so, and that's where it started. Like wow. we're like I'm like yes, I want to do music for a living. You wow. know, in ninth grade, I was uh, 14 or 15 years old. That's where I decided, like, like I want to play music. I want to yeah. be a musician. So he's the one that influenced me into music. He's the one that got me into jazz. He's the one that talked to me how they would talk to me in the industry according to my actions and how I would act to it. If I did something bad, well, this is how they're going to treat you because of that. Right. You know, you messed up on this on that song. You know, that chart, okay, this, this is what they're going to tell you. Like, he was, he was a great mentor. And he didn't just mentor me, okay? I can name... I don't know if you, for those of you who are watching, he mentored Patrice Russian and Dugu Chancellor, who's a drummer that played on Billie Jean. Oh, wow. Yeah, you know that. Yeah. God, God. He went to my high school. He graduated from my high school, in, but he graduated in 1969. Patrice Russian, she, I don't know, pianist. Mm. He, you know, a song Man in Black. Oh, yeah. Here it comes. I don't sing, but yeah. Mm. <laughs> um, he, She's the one that wrote that song, but it, it was different lyrics, but she wrote that song. Wow. Great pianist. I mean, she sounds like Herbie on piano. Wow. Great pianist. She so he mentored her. Earth, Wind, and Fire's horn section. If you guys know who Earth, Wind, yeah. and Fire is, Gary Baez, uh, Reggie Young. There's one more. I forget his name. They graduate from uh from from Lock from my high school. He mentored them in the '70s and, and early '80s. Uh, Tyrese Gibson. Oh yeah. The 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 singer actor. Actor. He graduated from my high school too. He actually when when he graduated, I was going in the year after. Oh Ooh. yeah. I missed him by one year, uh, you know, and then it was like a good high and, school and, for and that. Ron Bruner, they yeah. all went, yeah. And then he also mentored other people from other schools, but I was around all that, you know, like all that. And, and I, I mean, I saw him every day because I had like two or three music classes with him every day, but it got to a point where when I started playing piano that he didn't have me in a class no more. He would just tell me to go next door to the band room and just practice on piano. And, uh, you know, because it, everything that he would give me, I would learn it memorize it and not music but theory and harmony and all that stuff all the boring stuff like i just knew like nothing mm -hmm. you know all the numbers so so i mean sometimes i would have to i'll help him with the class like you know you got some kid oh oh what's a what's a major third from c i'm like that's e you know like like to me i'm like i know all this stuff already so he didn't have to um he didn't have to like uh uh, uh you know teach me anymore yeah yeah he, he gave me my first music book my first two music books and he's the one that really got in got me into all this um Into music. Well. Yeah. So <laughs> his name is Reggie Andrews. He passed away two years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's uh, 74, I believe. Um, but yeah, he passed away two years ago. Reggie Andrews. Wow. wow. And I'll never forget him. Man. Forget him. He's like, you know, mentor so many people. Yeah. Um, and great man, you know, a great mentor, you know. The thing was, he wasn't like this nice guy. He was, but he wasn't. Like, he was like... Straight. Tells you a straight like how it's gonna be. Yeah. Okay. On the scale from one to 
uh, Whiplash? Whiplash? <laughs> uh -huh. How was he? <laughs> no, he, he wasn't that, that bad. I think he was probably like a, like a 12. <laughs> no, 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 no. no, no, no. He, he was probably like a 5, you know? Okay. He was like a 5 okay. from that. That's good. Without that's the good. physical okay. part. No yeah. flying yeah. symbols. Yeah. That's a new music skill. <laughs> one to whiplash from one to whiplash. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's awesome. Uh, let's, I don't know, David or David or Millie. Whichever wants to you know, throw in uh, maybe your last question, last comment. Well, you know what? I remember that um, I met him at a Roca Firme um, concert and we just hit it off and we became yeah really good friends like right away. I don't know. I don't even know what we have in common, <laughs> but maybe it's our sense of humor or whatever it is. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, we're always being ourselves uh, and maybe that's what has always kept our friendship going. Yeah. But I remember going to his house and I didn't even know I could write songs or or try to sing or anything. And he had this, I think you had a Korg. There's a Korg uh, Trinity at the time. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. That's before then, we even, we were doing music in computer. Everything was all just like keyboard. Yeah. He didn't know, even have a stand. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Put on the chair. chair. <laughs> the <laughs> chairs that have the plastic on them. Yeah. That's yeah. where he would put yeah. that. Yeah the the piano and then um i remember he just started playing something and i think he told me like well, write something and then it just started from there and then we've been doing music since that day yeah yeah, yeah. you it's, know I've, I've changed a little bit but <laughs> <laughs> physically <laughs> no the music i um <laughs> the music the music changed many times <laughs> but um you know i've i've yeah i've known david since uh was that 22 years now yeah man i it went by so fast like i mean the last 20 years been like i mean they just fly but uh you know i love david man he's like a brother to me you know i've seen him in in his uh bad times you know and good times and he, same i'm pretty sure he's seen me when you know when i was feeling down and and you know when i'm happy you know yeah so thank you man love you man love you too brother uh, Millie, stand up so they can hug each other please. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> bro moment I know. Hey, bro moment yeah. Millie, what's your uh comment or question final I'm just, you know, I love what you mentioned before, The life is tough. It is, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. But to be in that moment, if we don't experience that, how we can um, take the good, right, and experience the happiness and whatever good we have, it's... it's uh, you know, I can I can see my kids sometimes they're having a hard times and I feel like I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. It's so good for you. Yeah, right, yeah. You know? Yep, yeah, yeah, that's I'm true. So sorry and it's painful and it's hard for me to see you like um, crying and frustrated and sad. Yeah. But this is going to be so good for you. Yeah. You know, even yeah. I j I'm I'm I just want to give them everything, yeah, you know, but sometimes yeah. I can't. Right, right. And it's like, God, you're doing something. I feel like you have, you have a plan for them and you have a plan for us. Yeah. Just help us to give being strong and standing in that truth that he is good. And no matter what situation we're, you know, passing yeah. through, sometimes feel like this is, this test is taking forever. Yeah. I don't know if yeah. you've been there. And oh yeah. When, when it's going, it's going to end. Like yeah. I've been through this for ten years. I feel like it's over. Please, God, like bring us to another level. And, yeah. You know, and I get kind of frustrated, but I just wanna. For me, it's like just wanna refocus. You know, like you're doing something, mm -hmm. and you are great, and you are good all the time. And when I, I listen to your story, you know you. You really struggle in life. Yeah. I mean, just, I can imagine to be without your mom. Yeah. You know, you're a child. You need your mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How hard is that? And the traumas and whatever. And just like, you know, let's keep going. Let's keep, maybe music was one of your your happy place where you can release all that mm -hmm. feelings. Yes. Right? And, yep. And uh, it, it yeah, d definitely. Uh, yeah, music. It's uh, it is my happy place. It's um, it's where I get to express myself. You know, because we have our instrument. You know, but even if we don't have an instrument, we have it internally. We could play. Everything's mm. all us. It's coming from from mm. us. Like everything, music comes from within us. You know, that's why it's so, so spiritual. 
you know, um, um, uh, with the kid thing, you know, like I got two girls, you know, I got actually I got four. I got two uh, biological kids and two step kids. I raised my step kids since they were uh, three and eight. Now they're uh, 22 and 28. Oh, wow. Yeah. Or oh, something like that. Yeah. And then, of course, I got my biological girls who are uh, 15 and 16. And they're teenagers right now. Girls, uh, you know, they're, they're, I mean, they want everything. And, you know, <laughs> and again, like I said, I, I feel like I'm on their schedule most of the time. Not my <laughs> schedule. You know, like, 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 like I got things to do. But like, oh, they got things to do, too. They have rehearsal and practice and all this stuff, too. Um, so it's a little hard with teenagers. Um, you know, it's uh, it's different. But. The thing about, um, like you were saying about, we cannot really, um, they need to know how to struggle too. Mm. They need to understand hardship and, and like, you know, that not everything, you know, because me as a dad, I give them, I give them everything they want, you know, and I kind of do. Mm. My wife doesn't give in as the way I do. <laughs> but, but I think that's good for them to like understand too that you're not going to get everything you want. It's not always going to be your way. Mm -hmm. You need to understand that, you know, some in life, like not everything is going to be, you know, it's going to be given to you or, you know, you're going to have to work for it or you got to work hard for for something or whatever you want. And I think that's very important, you know, to teach our kids and um, and like like my kids, with my girls. And I'm, I'm working on that myself. You know, my wife is good at that, like like how to discipline them and be more, you know, strict with them <laughs> and stuff like that. And I'm yeah, I'm the oh, OK, you want this? OK, you know, they they have my card. <laughs> my debit card on their oh, phones, you know, oh, you know, it's like that. But but they know not to use it unless they, you uh, know they come from with those first. Mm. Yeah, one of those, you know. That's cool. yeah. All right, Mr. David Barrera, your you no know, final comment or question. Uh, just good to meet you. Good to meet both of you. Yeah, yeah. Good, good to meet you, bro. Heard a lot about yeah, you. Nice heard a lot about you. Yeah. So good to meet you, bro. Yeah, good man. To, you Same. know, meet somebody who. Um, just musically, you've been all over the place, and it's awesome. You know, yeah. yeah. Obviously, we've I've always heard a, a great Norman Jackson stories yeah, on the yeah, keys yeah. and stuff. So it's good to yeah. you know to finally sit here and chat. Yeah, with yeah. You. no, thank you, man. Yeah, just get to know yeah. you a little bit. And same, likewise, bro. Yeah. Likewise with you. Yeah. So thank you guys for having me today. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Okay, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, my friends, for listening or watching today. Uh, visit us at christianpodcast.com Like, subscribe. Share this episode with a friend. We'll see you on the next one. Yep. Peace. Peace. Bye-bye. <laughs>